All right, so in the first lecture, I talked about these things called asymptotes, uh, vertical or, and horizontal asymptotes. All right, so let's go for the math definition first. All right, so you know at this point that a rational function is defined as a fraction of polynomial functions, okay? And we're going to get this notation here for a vertical asymptote. So let me read, let me translate, translate it for you in English. All right, so if the magnitude of the function is going to infinity as x goes to some number a, all right? So what that means is that x is approaching a number a, and as x is approaching this number a, our function is either shooting off to positive infinity or negative infinity. And this is creating a vertical line known as a vertical asymptote. All right, and so the graph approaches, but never, ever, ever touches this vertical line. Okay, so now let me translate here uh, what I'm saying about a horizontal asymptote. So now it's kind of reversed uh, from number one, you'll notice. If our function is approaching a number, so I'm approaching some range value, okay, as the magnitude of x is going to infinity. All right, so what this is saying here is that as x, as we either go towards positive infinity on our x-axis or negative infinity on our x-axis, and we're noticing that our function is getting ever so close to this y value b, then the line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote. All right, again, a horizontal line the graph approaches but never touches. All right, and here's a breakdown of the explanation given the symbols, all right? You're gonna see this a lot in the homework. So here, X is approaching A from the right in that first row there, all right? That's what the, and let me grab my pen. So when you see a plus up here as a superscript, it's just saying that X is approaching this number A from the right. Whereas if I make it a negative superscript, all right, x is approaching a from the left. All right, so again, that um, exponent minus just means from the left, and the plus just means from the right. Okay, similarly, we can, x can approach infinity. All right, that just means x is increasing without bound. So it's way, 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 way out on the right side of the x-axis. Similarly, x can approach negative infinity, which means we're far on the left, way out, uh, approaching negative infinity. All right, so how do we find vertical asymptotes? All right, they're really easy to solve for guys. You just have to know, we're gonna be solving for a bunch of different things, so you just need to know what is what, meaning keeping them straight. Now I'll try to summarize it as much as I can for you before the next exam. All right, so we wanna set the denominator equal to zero and solve for x. Okay, if a is a zero of the denominator, all right, meaning when we solve for x, we get some number a, then the line x equals a is a vertical asymptote. All right, the simplest example, all right, let's go back to our basic reciprocal function, 1 over x. All right, take the denominator, x, set it equal to 0, x equals 0, all right, well, x equals 0 is the vertical asymptote. All right, and we saw that in the graph that uh, the function could not touch the y-axis. All right, what about horizontal asymptotes? All right, it's a two-step process. One, case one, if the numerator has lower degree than the denominator, then there's a horizontal asymptote y equals zero, otherwise known as the x-axis. All right, so one more situation, and we'll go through a few examples, just, just hang on, just know that case one involves the numerator having less degree, whereas case two involves the numerator and denominator having the same degree, all right? And so notice here, this is just math lingo for being able to write a two polynomial functions. You don't care about all this. All you care about is the highest degree of the numerator and the denominator. If they match, then they are considered having the same degree, and the horizontal asymptote is just going to be the ratio or the fraction of the leading coefficients. 
Okay, so set another weight. Whatever number is out here in front of the highest power of x and the highest and, and in the denominator, that's going to become our horizontal asymptote. All right, so let's go through an example where we're going to find both of these types of asymptotes. All right, so first, let's find the vertical asymptote by setting the denominator equal to zero and solving for x. All right, since we, have, we are in factored form here, we must set each factor equal to zero and solve. Right? I'm not sure what happened to my and solve there. All right, so I have each factor set equal to zero. I'm going to solve each of these factors. All right, and so I end up with x equals one half and x equals negative three. And so we have two vertical asymptotes, right? One at positive one half and one at negative three. All right, what about the horizontal asymptotes? All right. Well, if I FOIL the denominator, notice that I get a quadratic. I have 2x squared. All right, so we ask ourselves, between the numerator and the denominator, do we have the same power or the same degree, or do we have more degree in the denominator? And hopefully you're all saying the same thing, which is, Angie, of course we have more degree in the denominator because we have an x squared. Absolutely. And since we have more degree in the denominator, then our horizontal asymptote is simply the x-axis or y equals zero. All right, what about finding asymptotes? All right, so here's another example here. What are we gonna do? Well, first we're gonna find the vertical asymptotes. All right, we're just gonna take that denominator, three x minus three, we're gonna set it equal to zero, and we are gonna solve for x. All right, and as I solve for x, I get x equals 1. All right, so the vertical line x equals 1 is a vertical asymptote. All right, and so this function, unlike the first one, only has one vertical asymptote. All right, what about the horizontal asymptotes? Well, this is where we need to look at the degree of the numerator and the denominator. All right, do they have the same degree or do we have more degree in the denominator? Well, since, even though we don't write it, there's technically a one here and here, looks to me like we have the same degree. And we do, all right? And so our horizontal asymptote is just going to be a ratio of the leading coefficients. Well, what's the leading coefficients? We have a two in front of the, the numerator x, and we have a three in front of the denominator x. And so our horizontal asymptote is y equals two thirds. All right, so here's a summary for you guys of how to solve for asymptotes. For the vertical asymptote, set the denominator equal to zero and solve for x. For the horizontal asymptotes, look at the power of the leading terms in the numerator and the denominator. If the power is greater in the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. If the power is the same, then the horizontal asymptote is the ratio or fraction of the leading coefficients.